and I just walked to him in a daze. I couldn't believe that he collapsed like that. Three goals at the last 15 minutes. Could see it all season had finished here. We've been at top two all season. And now, to drop out with four matches to go, it's really bad, it is. Tony Curry is God. That? He's the man. Goal by a I had to go on about Georgie Best in that. Oh, he was brilliant. Tony Curry, best player I've ever seen. You know, like he waltz past a couple of players, play a 40 yard pass, and it goes drop straight on somebody's feet. Like now they've got players there, they try and hit a 40 yard pass, and it ends up in back at stand. He was brilliant. Watch him. Can you imagine any of them what's down here now trying to do that? But they can't. Can they? No. God. What? God. Got to show them. Like, that, that's everlasting. How could it ever not be a blade? They're not on my chest. I feel proud. We're like, last year we went away to uh, Torquay and walking up and down from with shirt off and that. And I could see him all going, look at him here, look at him. And I'm like, others will be wearing shirts, but Man United shirts, Liverpool, whatever. Well, that's there forever, isn't it? Shrine, isn't it? Beautiful. That was the first thing I did when I moved in. Right that on the ceiling. SUFC. I laid back like looks at it. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to do that up here. Like, and I worked it all out. Like, first thing I did that, did that and then decorated the walls. Red and white, everything. This season with cup matches, I wore the same thing. Red and white, tracks up top. Not like if I wear some clothes for a match and we win, I'll wear them again the next match. Not down to underpants and socks, but you know, like shirt, jumper, trousers, sort of thing, coat. A lot of superstition in it. I think even then, what I said, they're not superstitious. They've still got little quirks or whatever, what they followed all the time. Right, I'm getting ready, I'm going. What about, uh, what? what about your year? I'm going to take not you with you. Him, no. eh? Why? Why? I hope you have a nice night. I hope you win. See you later. I'm not Bye -bye. taking the key. Hmm? I'm not taking the no. key. No, no, I'll lock me out. It's all right. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Yeah. I come after the United. Uh, she's United's first, and then lads next, and I, I follow on kind of in this tagging on in the third place. But I don't mind. I don't mind. It keeps it from under my feet. It allows me time to paint. <laughs> it's her. It's her interest. It's the only interest she has. My son put it very nicely. He says, "Well, home is where your heart is." and Bramall Lane is where our heart is. It's difficult to describe you. I mean, you go to away matches and you seal the grounds, but you don't get that feeling you get when you walk in Bramall Lane. You walk in and you look round and... It's a marvellous feeling, you feel so elated. It's the other side of life, isn't it? You know, you work and all that. You have to have something else. Get away from tension to work. I can go down there with lads, have a few drinks, have a laugh. Even if we've lost, sometimes you can have a laugh. Like at Portsmouth, last year we come back, had a good drink. We, like, try and forget it a bit. If we go up, it'll be all right. If we don't, we're different. Well, it's my main hobby, football. And I mean, my social life revolves around 
football, if I go out, I go to the pub where other fans go. I go to the social club at the lane. Uh, yeah, it'll do. I don't know, I've been drinking before, but well, I'll ask all that. Quite a score with top on it now to try, so you get that. I can't take my young ones down there and they're watching this crap. But things went and down. And I'm supposed to say to them, like, oh, you should love club and all this and that, which they do because I've bred it into them from day one. That's right, yeah. That they love club. But how am I supposed to get them really into watching teams like this? You know, like, they go down and... Well, after about 20 minutes, I'm going for a walk, Dad, and they go walking out cop because there's no to want. We haven't well, played one all season. No, but when you look, you look at our team, uh, what they cost, and I think we've done wonderful. OK, it hasn't been brilliant football that they've played, but, I mean, to us, the results matter more at present. If we to a certain win, extent. I'd rather but us like win. But for not coming. Those aren't going to come when they're playing like that. You I know we're getting results. Yeah, you can't criticise too much because we need Gene up to first division. Yeah, I don't want to football results. But, I mean, we haven't had the money, I think... I bet if they give money, who does he buy? Morris and Hill. Two at worst players in team. No, no. Oh. Morris and Hill. Morris is the biggest donkey we've ever had at Sensei for I can remember. Yeah, but... Right back to about fault, though. It'll perhaps best he could do it with the money. Yeah, but he spent 180,000 on him. On him? Yeah. I mean, like, if, if they give him money to spend, what does he spend it on? I don't know. I don't think he's done bad. He's got us some... Well, he's got some great ones. He's That's got... what I'm saying. He's no, got some great buys. Yeah. With small money buys. I still think to say what they are and what that team cost, they're doing well. Bassett slagged us off the other week because we only got 19,000 against Wolves and they brought about 4,000. He's saying we should be like Newcastle and Leeds. But they haven't been turning performances. What are uh, entertaining? I can understand people not going. You know, like they're uncommitted. Like they've still got a core of probably 10,000 what will go and watch them, no matter what, how bad they play or what. But they're not going to attract huge attendances by they're playing. Drink is of prime concern. As you all know, drink is one of the biggest threats we have to safety. It'll be a strict policy at this match that nobody who is worth the wear for drink will be allowed into the ground. And I expect you all to be familiar with your, the legislation relating to alcohol and apply it, please. Public safety, again, as you all know, is paramount. All of you are expected to use initiative. If you see anything that happens that is compromising safety, then take action immediately and tell us later. I don't want you hanging about. If you think there's an immediate danger, you take the action. You will not be criticised for it. Right, let's get on with the match. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's very difficult, but I still think we could, we could uh, police uh, our sport, ourselves internally. By that, I mean with our own stewards. And I think that uh, we should take down the fences that herd people like animals, which is terribly unfair. I dislike it all. The supporters say they haven't really got to do much to be arrested. It's as if there's got to be a number of arrests to make the day worthwhile, I always think. You know, five before the game or five during the game and half a dozen after the game, and it's been a reasonable day. I might be doing them an injustice, but I would much prefer that they were not seen to that extent. The uh, cavalry charge has just arrived. I don't know how many there are, a dozen other look at it. I think they should be more inconspicuous. I think they, they feel that by being conspicuous, they deter. But if you speak to the supporters throughout the country, it doesn't deter anything. They despise the overkill. I no, think they go too it's, far sometimes. Oh, yeah. a lot too far. What's I don't it? blame people when they have a dig at them. They got me at Bristol yeah. last year in yeah. playoffs. We were outside. Are you here? And that horse stood on me. Yeah. And I was trapped between car and oh, between two cars. And the horse run through the middle. And he stood on my foot like so. I'm laid yeah. out in agony. And all the coppers on the horse laughing at me. They do. Yeah. I've seen it many times. They just run far. into crowds and there's kids and everybody in them. Yeah. I mean, I'm not joking. They're yes, not. It's flying. Right. They just, yeah. they, they, I think police seriously love football violence as much as I hooligans do. I don't care what it says, they, they don't could love it. be a bit more low profile. We've been here, what, 30 odd years? We've only once had any trouble, you know, and that was Manchester United way back in the bad old days. She's coming down John Street. 
and she asked the policeman um, uh, if it was all right for her to go down, whether they the fans out. The policeman says, yes, she'll be all right if you stand by the wall. So when he, when he went walking down by the wall, and she gets so far down John Street, all the fans came pouring out, and the, the uh, must have been the rougher element, I suppose, uh, they, they just pinned her against the wall and they were spitting on her and uh, shaking the fists under her face and, and really being abusive to her in every way. And one of their fans, uh, an, uh, one of the older fans, came and he stood in front of her and put his arms around her and, and kept him away from her, you know. Uh, but it's, they're very few and they're very infrequent, very infrequent. I'll take more than that, put in there. Uh, she lives, eats, breathes and sleeps united. say it releases a lot of tensions. You go there, you get enthralled in the game and uh, you can shout. I mean, how many places can you go and shout? And really, let yourself go. You really let yourself go. A big game like this, 35,000 people, rival supporters, some, some of the fans that come here don't come just for the game and they're the people that I'm interested in. It's my job to find out where these people are, whereabouts in the ground they are, and try and keep the rival set supporters away from each other. Just cut it left a bit more. Have you got the list of photos that I've brought down? No, them that's all, them that's... know who we are. They'll walk around you, sticking a video camera in your face, and that. Since I was younger, I've always, since I was 11, 12, I've always been fighting in different gangs and groups and things like that. So I thought, when I got older, I just moved into football, because there were older people, and they're always, get, you're always guaranteed a good fight, that's all. Just been passed down from older hooligans from United from years and years ago, and it's just kept through, and it'll always keep through, always, it'll never change. Like you go to you go to a town centre, and you go for one reason, and that's for their boys. If you see a man, a little kid walking down with a scarf on, you don't bother them, because that's that, that beats the idea, is it? We we go there looking for their lads. And if we don't see their lads, it's not a wasted day because we've still got match to go to. But if we see their lads, it's a good bonus for us. Like I don't know many at BBC. I know Orans. A lot of what they do is wrong. I know that, but. Like I say, it stopped people coming to Sheffield to to attack us. Yeah. Like before, everybody used to come out cop and have a dig at us. Yeah. Now they don't. When Leeds come to cop, Man United, they stood in the bottom corner. They were flying to death. As soon as they scored a goal, they're trying to get through the gates. A few years ago, they'd have been made up in the middle of cop, kicking us all off. So, although I, I disagree with a lot of what they've done at BBC, they've done a lot of good and all. It's like a deterrent, I suppose, like bomb and all that, innit? You'll play a weapon. You don't like it, but if it stops others coming and having a crack at you, it's all right. You finished. They're not the move from down there, they're up there now. See them stood at the back? Just there. The club are trying desperately to bring families back to the game and have a policy which is born at Wild as well, that any swearing, bad language, racial chants, obscene gestures, we just don't tolerate them at all. And anybody that behaves like that, depending on the severity of it, are either arrested or rejected from the ground. Cannon finds Dean. Bryson. Oh, good save. He ran all the way, we had a tackle. No, nobody tackled him. Rubbish. Thank you. 
and my wife looks at the results on TV. And if United lose, she knows she's going to get a bad weekend. But if we win, then everything's all right. It means a lot. It means a lot. Being a boring manager, don't they? He's not good for game and things like that. Yeah, how on earth can he say up with his track record? His track record is incredible. At the end of the day, if he's getting them results, fans are coming in, you can't grumble at that. Well, he's not a boring man, is he? No. He's a great fellow, he is. I think he wouldn't start going up back a bit, like he says, he's building a team here now, not selling them, you know, when they got inquiries for players. He's, I think it was all it bloke that's through and said that, you know. He's yeah. making a team, not selling them. But he's done in it, really. I mean, he's gone, got out with old and in with new. He's built a young side for future. I like to be among the younger people. I love listening to them and you see them meet up and start courting and get married and have babies, you know. And it's like, a, it is like a family. Proud, I know. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to register as a blade, make it official. It means that she'd be attached to club in some way. And I'd like, wait, well, that's what I want for her. Then when she's a bit older, and knows what it's all about, I'll be taking her to the matches. She'll be officially a blade once I sign that piece of paper tomorrow. Yeah. Little junior blade. <laughs> <laughs> She thinks I'm deaf with some of the things I get up to, you know, and little things I fetch from the shop and, and you know, what you bought this time, you know. Because every week, you know, well, every fortnight or so, when, whenever we've got an home match, I always fetch something back in with me. I mean, other daughter, she's all I see her up and around. What you got for me this week, Dad? Well, it's the same as mother-in-law, isn't it? She always thinks I'm deaf with the money I spend at club like, but just an hobby, you know, as everybody else got different things, but... Mine devoted to Sheffield United. Mm. The time I've done with I think she'll like football. Mm. Danielle, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ. Just as Danielle will be brought up to support a particular football team, she'll continue to wear their colours, their hat or their scarf, She'll also wear the sign of Jesus Christ because her parents will bring her up to be a follower and supporter of him. Well done. Simon, Yuta, Fraser, Callum, SUFC. And with the other one, Nathan, I put him in supporters club at two days old. So he was in papers with that like. He's a good player. They've just won league again, their, their club. It would well, be my dream if he could play for United. Man, I, I think I'd be a bit uh, edgy if I were in cop and he were playing for United and they were slagging him off. I'd end up turning around and cracking someday. <laughs> it's uh, all four lads, all four brothers of United Heights. These two winners what go all the time, or the two go like big matches. But my dad would always a Wednesday, he tried taking us to Wednesday matches. I can remember one of my earliest memories taking me to Hillsborough and we drew about 2 2. Uh, I was still a blade, even then. He took me to Leeds when Leeds were a big club and Wednesday beat them. But they were no dear for me. We were always down to the lane, watched Tony Curry and all them and they were here, Burton Hall. They were a great club at the time. I think that's what's made it so strong. He likes to go Callum, but with Nathan, I have to more or less force him to go. But there's no way I'm going to let him be a Wednesday night. I'd rather chuck him out at Wednesday first. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Wednesday night, this. Get up. You've got a flask in top pocket. You can't take any living, can it be? Without United. Typical Wednesday night. 
No, but the thing is this, you know when he comes on a Monday after the Saturday, if they've lost or they've drawn, he don't want to talk to you. But you know if they win, he's waiting for you coming through gate in Lorry. And then he starts. That's him, typical United, aren't He won't know. They've got to win before he, he says won't know never lost. <laughs> he doesn't know no about that football. Keeps asking me how Tony Curry's going on if he's still playing, aren't we? <laughs> I know, it's a boring job, terrible job. You've got to have something to think about while you're working, because it's that bad. I know I'm thinking about football nearly all the time. I was going to turn the job down because I said, no way did I want to work Saturday afternoon. And she wrote it in my contract that I wouldn't have to work Saturday afternoon. I said, I'll come in Saturday morning and I'll come in all day Sunday. But fortunately, I never had to work weekends. The job I got was just Monday to Friday. But I did have it written in that I wouldn't work Saturday afternoon. I've never had a job where I've had to work Saturday afternoon. I've always gone to the matches. He summed it up, Shankler, when he said that football's not about, it's not life or death, it's more important than that to a lot of us it is. When we lost to Wednesday 4 0 at Boxing Hill at that time, that looked worst. I come home, keep Christmas tree or knocked all the decorations down, a lot, put a lot down. And that were boxing deal all the way down Christmas were finished then. And uh, I think that was the first time wife realised how uh, serious I take it. Because I think she just thought it were, you know, just uh, like a hobby, you know. Mm. But it, it's like a religion. Oh, it's a dear do. Like if I take them, it's two and a half pounds each for them. Four pounds for me. You get a programme, a pie. You know, a lot of money. And like now, they're playing twice a week. So you're talking all oh, £20 a week, things like that. And they think that it's all right. You know, like, oh, £20, that's no, just give them that. I'll admit to me, it isn't really. I'll spend on club. If I go to a away match, it's no, if I spend about £30, £40, as long as I enjoy myself, I'm not bothered. But for others, can't expect it. A lot of people out of work or in low paid jobs, they're not going to pay, are they? Albeit that the board of directors gave their qualified blessing to the involvement of Mr Hashimi in the club earlier this month, recent publicity now leads them to believe that his involvement would not be in the best interest of Sheffield United and wish all negotiations to cease. And following discussions with my fellow directors, agree to request the shareholders to withdraw from involvement with Mr Hashimi and remove the shares off the market. Fans were all talking about it at first when it came through that this Iraqi boat club. Everybody said, oh, great, we can like compete with Leeds with transfer fees and all that. About a week later, we're laughing stock. Can't even go out and pay 40,000 for a player. There's a United lover, he's a United fan. I've never seen him do before. Oh. That's Oshima. Uh, and for me, he's just there, he's just there for development. It what it said uh, on television To make what night. he can make out of clubs. Kevin. And put us in more trouble, in my opinion. Fancy having all that money? Yeah. Offering money to make him. Money to play, to buy players. I think it's terrible. I think really he's done what he's done at wrong time, I need to sort club at wrong time. I can't blame Bassett, how can I blame Bassett? We've got, the, we've got the best manager in country, without Definitely. a shadow of a doubt. No the best manager in country, we've got a team of trayers. We've just bought one Billy Whitehurst, and I can't believe what's happening down here. I can't, honestly, I just can't believe it. Stops us from getting in Division 1, that. They'll stop Definitely. us from getting in First Division. But I do blame board and all, especially uh, Breela, for what he did. And like a Judas, he sells us out. He's done all this preaching about how he wants to see us in first division. And we get that close. And he won't give him no money to buy up to back up the squad or all like that. We've had to rely on other directors. What else? I think it's shocking what he's done, really. Port Vale today, hard match. We haven't beaten them the last three times I've played them. They're always tight matches. They're good football inside them. Most of the good football inside is in the middle of the division. And uh, to be another Arden, need a flash of magic from somebody to do something today. So then, come on in, Cal. Come on. Come on.
Where are you caught in downstairs? Lena. Come on, Ned. This is the one. Got to do it. What a finish. Dino, brilliant. I nearly fainted, I know I felt as excited, dizzy, or whatever in my life. Superb. We'll do it now. I didn't think we would have done it. 22 but at Clark, so we've done it. But oh. Brilliant! Right, we just keep fighting against Leeds. 